Hello everybody, welcome. Uh, first of all, sorry for the noise. I'm using the microphone on the camera here and it's picking up the fan from my spectrum analyzer. But I'm going to be doing a review today of a, a device that I bought. It's a preamplifier. It's a low noise, wide band, gas fed preamplifier. And this is it. It's from a company called Jim. And Jim stands for Japan Information Medium. I assume it comes from Japan, made in Japan, it doesn't say anywhere on here. Uh, but it's the M-75 model. This is the device, it's got a B and C on each end. It's kind of designed, it, it operates on 9 volts, 9 volt battery here, or you can attach it to a 12 volt source. Oh, there it is, made in Japan, there. You put the antenna here, it's designed so you can put it on a portable, you can attach it to a portable here, put your antenna here and put it in line with and use it that way. It's got a gain and on off switch that goes from minus 10 dB to plus 20 dB. It's got a bandwidth switch. You can go from 225 to 1500 megahertz, 108 to 185 megahertz, or 24 megahertz to 2.15 gigahertz. So I guess C would be kind of the bypass path and it's designed for scanner users to, for VHF and UHF frequencies and so I decided I'm ha I bought this from Scanner Master and it's quite it's kind of expensive it was I think a hundred and forty dollars or something like that if I remember correctly so it's not cheap and I hooked it up to my SDR and I'm just getting unpredictable results I'm not happy with the results I'm getting so I decided to bring it into my lab and have a look at it and just see what it's doing and what's, uh, what's up here. We can open this up. I can use a little screwdriver to give it a help to get it started. And that's where you put your battery. If you're going to attach it to an external source, they say to tape the battery contacts because there's metal in here and it can short to the metal contacts or it can short out a couple of these metal contacts or whatever. So that's the inside. Looks pretty simple. It, it's, not, it's not designed for outdoor use. It's designed for indoor use only. So it's not ideal in that way to be mounted at an antenna. It's designed for internal use and that's what I'm using it as. So I got a power supply here. I've got it right now at 12 volts. I got it current limited to 100 milliamps, so I'm, it's a plus for the inner connector of the connector, so I'm going to attach it to uh, power 12 volts, and we're going to have a look at it. So if you turn it on, oops, I got to turn the power spot on, enable it, there we go. You get a red light indicating that the device is on. I'm going to put it on the B position, which is... 108 to 185 megahertz because it's a little easier to see and it's taking about 25 to 30 milliamps at 12 volts so that's what I'm seeing so let me go ahead and hook it up to the spectrum analyzer and I'll be back shortly with it hooked up to the spectrum analyzer and we'll have a look at it okay we're back and uh, this is my spectrum analyzer. It's a Sigwent spectrum analyzer. And so what I'm going to be doing here is um, using the tracking generator. It's got a tracking generator built into it. And I'm going to be hooking this in line, but I'm gonna first going to test all the cabling. I have a 30 dB attenuator in here that I've added. This will put out 0 to minus 20 dBm. For the tracking generator, minus 20 is a little too high, so I'm just knocking it down by 30 dB. So, if I enable the tracking generator and turn it on, I'm getting a, I'm looking at 1 megahertz to 500 megahertz, and I get a pretty flat line. So that's what I want to see with the cabling. So that's good. So let's turn that off. We will now disconnect this. And so we're going to put the tracking generator into the antenna port. 
then I'll put the device into the receiver input like that. And so that's how we're going to be testing it. So I'm going to turn the tracking generator down to minus 20 dBm and plus the 30, that's minus 50 dBm that's going to be going into the antenna port. And I have the 108 to 185 megahertz filter kicked in. So right now the device is off. And one of the problems I have found that with the device off, in fact, let me boost up the level, you get nothing through the device. So it's, it's dead. It will not pass. There's no bypass mode when the device is off. So you have to have the device on if it's in line. That's one thing I don't particularly like. So I'm going to have to leave it on the whole time, which is not that big of a problem. It takes 20 milliamps at, uh, at 12 volts, so that's not a whole lot of power. But still, I would have liked to have seen a bypass mode in the M75. So now if I just turn it on, and turn it on the minimum, we see a signal there. And as you can see, as I turn it, we, we're, it's some, if I put the peak here, somewhere around 112, so there's like 108 megahertz, approximately. And so it is starting about 108 megahertz, and it goes out here to about 170 something megahertz. And it's supposed to go to 185, so I mean, that's, that's close. That's not a problem. And if I turn up this, it says it's supposed to go from minus 10 dB, not minus 10 dB to plus 20 dB is the gain adjustment that you're supposed to have. So that's, that's leveling off about minus 40 dB right now. And so if I adjust it, I can go to minus 30 dB, go higher to minus 20 dB, higher to minus 10 dB, and that's one of the problems. I'm at maximum gain, and when I hit maximum gain, it's like it went to the minus 10 dB stage. So now if I rotate it back down there, now it's, now it's working again, and I'm going up, 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 up with the gain, up with the gain, boom. And it, when I go to maximum gain, it pops down to minus, to minus 10. So that's the minus 10 spot, and that's the plus 20. Now that time it worked, but boom, there. I'm still at the maximum gain and it goes down. So that's, that's one of the problems I'm having here. When I go to maximum gain, it'll automatically go down to the, min the minus 10 dB or the minimum gain setting, which if I, if I want maximum gain and I just turn the knob up, it's not going to work for me. And it's like that way in all the other filters. If I put in the 225 to 1500, that's the 225 to 1500. I'm not going to go out higher in frequency because the cabling starts to have attenuation and it's confusing as to what, what is caused by cabling and what is caused by the device. The device is not flat all the way out to whatever, but I wouldn't expect it to be. Then. So approximately two, that's 247. It says 225, so that's pretty good. It seems to be working there. If I go to the 24, that's 24 to 2.1 gigahertz. And so if I come down here, oops. Let me go all the way down to the knee. Yeah, I've got 24. So that's pretty good. 25. So that's working pretty good. But the one thing that just doesn't work for me is this gain control. Even when I back it off, it, it's still there now. It's like it's at minus 10 permanently, but it, eventually it will work again. It will reset. There it is. So it just gets in this mode where it wants to go to minus 10. There it is. So I don't know what that is. It, it's not usable, in my opinion, the way it is now. So I either I will have to see if I can return it to Scanner Master or get in there and fix it myself. I don't think it's just a resistor here. 
because if I backed it down, I've just backed it down to about half gain and it hasn't recovered. There, now it just recovered. So there's something else going on in the circuit that's, uh, that's just not working well. And sometimes it works, but I can't depend on it. So, anyways, that's it. That's the Jim M-75 low noise wideband gas vet preamplifier uh, intermittently works on maximum gain so that's it for this uh, we'll see you later